Hi everyone! So, a new season is fast approaching depending on when you define autumn slash fall. Whether it's the beginning of September or whenever the sort of technical start is later on in the month, I thought it was still an appropriate time to share with you my autumn TBR. So I love sort of setting myself a seasonal TBR. I do it for most seasons. You can go back and check out my summer one and my spring one and it's sort of a way for me to get really excited about the up and coming reading season, get into the mood for the change in weather, sort of pick out some books that sort of fit in I feel with like the atmosphere that is sort of um, starting to creep up and will continue. Because of that I'm sure you won't be surprised that there's a few sort of like mystery creepy books in there with the whole sort of Halloween season upon us as well as just some like cosy comfort reads as it gets a little bit colder and some um, other bits and pieces that just felt like it was time to read. So without further ado, you know what a TBR is, let's have a look at the books. First up I'm going to show you my physical stack and then I have a few audiobooks to mention but there are two books I'm already currently reading so I thought I'll start with those. It also means regardless of the rest of autumn I'm definitely going to read at least two of these books because I'm halfway through two of them. Um, and one of them is The Book of Phoenix by Nnedi Okorafor. This is the um, Patreon book club read that um, my patrons and I are reading over uh, there. The discussion for this video will be going live at the very beginning of October. I'm um, just before we start our next book which we've yet to pick and I am obviously reading it for that purpose but I am loving this book. I'm currently halfway through it. To be fair it's not a big surprise I'm loving it because I love Nnedi Okorafor, she's one of my favourite speculative writers and this one has not disappointed me at all so far. It is all about this woman named Phoenix who has um, been basically grown in a laboratory. I think she's only two years old but she looks and um, has the sort of mental capacity of a 40 year old woman because she aged rapidly and she's obviously been created for a purpose but she's not entirely clear of that purpose and it's about her escaping from the laboratory and discovering more about the world she lives in and potentially taking revenge and I don't know exactly what's going to come of the end of the book because I've not finished it but I'm really enjoying it and we'll obviously be continuing on with this one in September. Another book I'm currently reading and have read the first four short stories in is this collection called Taktumi which is an anthology of arctic horror stories. So this is a compilation of lots of different authors and um, every different story is by a different writer from um, somewhere in the Arctic region and I've been really enjoying this. All the stories so far have been very different because obviously they're written by different writers but they just have a very distinctive voice in each one. The first one in particular was such a great start to the collection because it really sent a shiver through my spine. Like I felt my like stomach drop at multiple points when I was reading it because it was just really spine tingling. And overall, yeah, really enjoying this one, but as you can guess, it is like a horror anthology. So there are lots of short, creepy short stories. Uh, not much else that I can say about it, but uh, you'll probably see me wrap this one up at the end of September as well. I swear not everything on this is horror or creepy, but for some reason, the next couple that I have to show to you are as well. And this one's actually middle grade. So it's not going to be that scary, I imagine. It's sort of being compared to um, Goosebumps in tone, and it's Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. There's something about middle grade literature that I find very cosy and comforting and I thought it would be fun to read this more creepy middle grade book in the autumn months as um, it sort of has that comforting side of middle grade potentially but also the creepiness that will like feed into the whole Halloween atmosphere. So I'm really looking forward to this one. It's about an 11 year old girl named Ollie and her two friends Coco and Brian who set off on a chilling adventure in the woods with nightfall fast descending and the ever watchful eyes of scarecrows on their backs. Honestly what is as scary as a scarecrow? Nothing. Not clowns because I like clowns so you know take your like horror clowns and give me horror scarecrows because they're much more frightening so I am really looking forward to reading this. We then have Japanese Ghost Stories by Lafkadi O'Hearn and this one's pretty self-explanatory. Penguin do a lot of these sort of classic collections of folk tales, creepy stories, horror stories, fairy tales, um, these kind of things from different cultures and different countries and I really enjoy picking them up and discovering sort of um, the legends or the scary stories from different cultures and this one is obviously Japanese ghost stories and I've been meaning to pick it up for quite a while. I'm not sure there's much else I can really say about it. Like I said the title is pretty self-explanatory. On the back it mentions a couple of stories including the dead wreck revenge on the living paintings come alive, spectral brides possess mortal men and a priest of ours human flesh in these chilling Japanese ghost stories retold by a master of the supernatural. So 
really excited about this. Something a little bit different though, I then have a poetry collection and that's My Darling from the Lions by Rachel Long. I've been really in the mood to pick up some new poetry recently and this one was sent to me for review um, by the publisher so I figured why not let this be the next one that I check out. I'm not familiar with this poet so I can't really comment on her style but I can tell you the themes that this collection brings together from the back which is that um, it's full of family quirks, the perils of dating, the grip of religion or sexual awakening. Stories that are by turn emotionally insightful, politically conscious, wise, funny and outrageous. So I'm just looking forward to giving this a shot and trying a new poet because I have discovered a lot of my favourite poets just from picking up random collections and falling in love so hoping to um, experience positive things with this one as well. We then have a middle grade mystery which is not horror in the slightest and that's The Unmapped Sea by Mary Rose Wood. This is book five in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series. This is one of my favourite middle grade series of all time. <laughs> I feel like you're probably sick of hearing me talk about this because I've been reading the series throughout 2020 so I've been reviewing every book as I read it and talking about the next ones I'm going to read quite regularly but I'm loving them. I'm just absolutely loving them. They're about a governess who is in charge of three wards that were children discovered in the woods having been raised by wolves and it's jam-packed with mystery and atmosphere and whimsical comical writing and I just think they're perfection so I'm really excited to keep going. There's only six in the series so I have both five and six on my bookshelf and might actually pick up six as well because I'm probably going to want all of the answers by the time I finish this since there's so many questions running through my brain. We then have The Duke Suspicion by Susanna Craig. This is a historical romance if you couldn't guess by the cover. <laughs> Susanna Craig is a historical romance writer that I've only recently discovered but I absolutely love The Lady's Deception which which was the book I read by her. She writes books set in the 19th century which is probably my favourite historical romance sort of period that I've read about so far although it's obviously 100 years so it's quite a wide one but this is from the same series as Lady's Deception but about another sibling from the same family so in the book that I read we followed a girl, an English girl um, who was around 20 when she fell in love with this young Irish man who was a lawyer and the male love interest in that story um, has two older sisters and they each have their own novel as well so this is about one of his sisters so I feel like I'm vaguely familiar with the family but you can read these books in any order you want because they're obviously um, about different siblings. I mean, given that I read the third book, I know the outcome of both of the sisters' romances um, from the third book because these are books one and two, but let's be honest, we all know the outcome of the romance plotline when we pick up a cheesy romance book and that's one of the joys of them, the sort of reliability and I'm really looking forward to just reading some fun historical romance by an author who I've been really really enjoying. Oh I should probably tell you what this is about as well, so the sister is named Erica and she ends up staying with this duke who believes she might be spying on him um, but actually she's just like a wannabe botanist and they fall in love so I'm, I'm here for that. We then have Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Power who is one of Booktube's most beloved YA authors. Her book Wilder Girls took the internet by storm and this is her latest offering to the literary world. I haven't read Wilder Girls but I'm super excited about this one. I believe it is a sort of like gruesome YA um, mystery horror novel, um, more with a contemporary um, mystery than I think is um, the case for Wilder Girls. And I believe this one's about a teenage girl named Margot who spent her whole life just with her mother having no idea about the rest of her family or her father or where her mother's from because she keeps it entirely secret. But obviously she wants answers so when she discovers the name of the town that her mum's originally from she decides to run away and visit it but are the secrets and answers that she gets what she wanted? I don't know, probably not because I think it's going to be quite dark but I'm excited. We then have Dragon Unleashed by Grace Straven which is a fantasy romance novel. Grace Straven writes the best fantasy romance novels. Hands down, I have not read a better fantasy romance writer. She really like combines that like full-on romance genre and fantasy genre and does both spectacularly in one place. And this is the sequel to Phoenix Unbound, but it's um, about a different character from the main character in Phoenix Unbound, which I have read. It's about a character that appeared as a side character in book one and a character that I found really, really interesting. So I'm really looking forward to getting her side of the story and it's set in this empire, which is um, strictly divided and 
and there's lots of like turmoil and cruelty and we sort of saw the beginnings of that empire being challenged in book one so that will probably continue to unfold in this book whilst we also follow our main character who is Nain who's named Halani, who I believe is actually a dragon, so she can um, take the form of a human but is secretly a dragon and is trying to hide that um, from the sort of cruel empress that runs this empire. We have another anthology next, but this one's a big mixture. This has got short stories, poems and essays in it, and it's We Were Always Here, a queer words anthology with contributions from various different authors, um, all from Scotland. On the back it's described as a snapshot of current Scottish LGBTI plus writing that showcases queer talent. So I'm looking forward to this. I recognise some of the authors like Chrissy Logan and Harry Josephine Giles. I've read both of them in the past but there's others never heard of before so it could be a good one to discover some new poets or essayists or short story writers as well as just hear some more like underrepresented voices which I think will be really really lovely. I'm reading this one for a book club which is run by Molly and Lily and I will link their channels down below in case you'd like to read along as well. Back to the creepy because we couldn't stay away for long could we? I was already in the mood for creepy and now that it's autumn I feel like I'm just going to be going even harder on it and next we have The Luminous Day by Caitlin Starling. This is a horror sci-fi novel and I'm so excited because I've also been getting into sci-fi and this one um, came highly recommended. It actually got recommended to me in a few different um, sort of like iterations like when I was looking for recommendations of thrillers, sci-fi, horror, it kept coming up in all those different genres so I think I'm gonna really love it. And it's about a woman named Gear who I think sort of tricks herself on an expedition, she gets this job um, whilst maybe running from something or hiding something and maybe she's not really supposed to get this job but it seems like easy money. So she takes up this job um, which involves sort of like excavating land. I don't know if it's on our planet or what but uh, we will find out and collecting sort of mineral deposits. But the suit that she um, goes on the expedition in, so the one that like uh, sort of keeps her habitat safe and her air safe is controlled by somebody else that's the way the science in this world works it's somebody is sort of in charge of the suit that you're inside and it turns out the person that is controlling her suit has information about her that she's not supposed to have and she starts to use it against her and it gets really creepy and I don't know what else to expect but I'm really looking forward to it. Then another eagerly anticipated title which is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This is a mystery thriller novel by uh, the author Alyssa Cole who is probably most well known for her romance. She writes a lot of romance novels and she's very popular for her romance. I've read one of her short stories in the past. It wasn't even really a novella, it was more of a short story and I really like the sound of this. It's obviously something quite different from romance because like I said it's a mystery thriller but it sounds spectacular. It's been compared to, well it's compared on the back to Rear Window meets Get Out which sounds like terrifyingly brilliant and not only is it a sort of horror thriller but it's also a commentary on racism and gentrification so it's about our main character who starts running tours in her local neighborhood as um, more and more people move in and um, sort of more like wealthy or like upper middle class white people move into her um, area and she starts running these tours but her and her assistant end up finding some dark secrets that they weren't prepared for. We then have Elazzo by Darcy Little Badger which is a middle grade mystery novel by a Native American author and I really really want to read more books by Native American and Indigenous writers so let me know if you've got any recommendations but this one sounds spectacular. I will read you the blurb. Um, it's about Lazo who lives in this slightly strange America. She can raise the ghosts of dead animals, a skill passed down through generations of her Lipan Apache family. But her beloved cousin has just been murdered in a town that wants no prying eyes. She is going to do more than pry, however. The picture-perfect facade of Willoughby masks a gruesome secret and she will rely on her wits, skills and friends to tear off the mask and protect her family. So like I said, sort of middle grade or maybe like young YA mystery novel and it sounds fantastic. Then last but not least for physical novels is another creepy one because why not? And that is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This sounds so creepy and I'm so excited about it. It's set in an isolated university for the elite and prestigious and super intelligent and our protagonist ends up going there because she likes the idea of like being quite because she likes the idea of studying in solitude but when she gets there she finds out that things are a little bit darker 
than she expected. And I love a university setting, that's something I'm super here for. I love an isolated sort of like creepy story and I'm not sure but this might be one that ends up having a paranormal twist. I can't be certain but I will let you know when I find out. We then, like I mentioned, have a few audiobooks which I will share with you now. The first one is Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. So Laura Bates is predominantly a non-fiction writer. She has written fiction as well. But I have read um, both of her other adult non-fiction works which are Everyday Sexism and Misogynation and I think she's a really spectacular writer when it comes to modern day misogyny and sexism and um, the lives of women in contemporary society and she explores everything from like workplace discrimination to um, sexual violence against women and this one as you may be able to guess from the title is about the rise of online misogyny and the sort of like um, alternative communities like in the depth of the internet but they're not really even in the depth these days they're like pretty straight up and in your face um, where they talk about women like they are objects or animals and not humans and essentially argue against our equality and it's very terrifying but very important to learn about so I'm looking forward to reading her um, analysis of that phenomenon. Then we have another non-fiction title and that is The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander so I've meant to read this book for a really long time um, but never picked myself up a copy and finally got the audiobook and I've read maybe four or five non-fiction books on the incarceration system in the past but something I still feel like I can learn a lot about and it's really important to continually talk about so this one's one I've heard a lot of good things about and particularly since I watched 13 a few years ago the Netflix documentary was when I first put this on my TBR because Michelle Alexander is interviewed in that documentary and she's so insightful and I think this book will be absolutely incredible. I've heard brilliant, brilliant things. It particularly hones in on the racism that is a part of the US incarceration system and um, how the sort of modern day justice and incarceration systems create what is effectively a contemporary version of um, the Jim Crow era in uh, American um, race relations and I think, like I said, it's going to be really insightful, really, really important. So I've been meaning to, to listen to it and now I have the audiobook, I want to make that a priority. Although I would love it if you have any recommendations in the comments down below of books that look at the British incarceration system because all of the books I have read about um, prisons or the justice system have been focused on the US. I mean, it's a huge, huge place, obviously, with a lot of issues and um, a lot is published on it, so they're really easy to access. However, I've not come across any really about Britain that have really great reviews, so let me know if you have any. As you can probably tell if you've made it to the end of this video, there are a few books I didn't mention here, and that's because I have an entirely separate TBR video up on my channel which is for the eight days between the 27th of September and the 4th of October because that is when my readathon the Femme Fan Tale is running which is a readathon that um, specifically focuses on reading SFF by women and I have a six book TBR for those eight days I don't know if I'm gonna manage to do it but I would love to give it like my all and really really go for it and I will be vlogging that, so if you want to know the uh, six books I'm hoping to read during those eight days, then you can go check that video out. I am otherwise, I am super excited about everything I've shown you in this video. I'd love to hear if you've read any of them, are interested in hearing my reviews of any of them, and what potentially will you be reading in autumn? But until next time, happy reading, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.